is the Remy here, and welcome back to Durgaman. We're here after uh, their battle out that they were having. But here we are, I guess eating food or something, I don't know. Why are you spinning around like that? This looks so much cooler than just regenerating my clothes, and it helps to release energy. Again and again, with this mystery energy, mysterious energy. Can you restore things without it? And if it's all about energy, then shouldn't you be able to restore things in the regular world too? If you expend enough energy, then yes, you can. You can even create something entirely new. I have a million questions and ideas on how I might use this power for the good of humanity. What about food? Let's say you eat an apple. Using its core, can you restore it to its original state? You're so practical, Starlet. Yes, food can be rec recreated or restored, but that would be useless for most quantities. You expend more energy than you receive. It seems energy efficiency is just as important in the quantity world. If objects are able to, re to be restored so quickly, then why does regeneration take more than a few seconds? Quansi bodies contain much more energy than inanimate, in inanimate, inanimate objects, or even animals and humans for that matter. Anyway, why am I even answering these questions? This is boring. Cass, who had already poured everyone a cup of tea before settling down at the table, is now devoting all of his attention to his salad. Vincent has fallen asleep. Nice attitude, thanks. Do I have, do I have that kind of energy too? Well, your Kwanzi said yes, that I just need to figure out how to use it. I have a ton more questions I want to ask, but as I'm formulating them in my mind, Ryu proceeds to shovel his mouthful of cookies. I have the sneaking suspicion that no one is interested in helping me understand all of this Kwanzi stuff. Alright, I'll leave you lovebirds alone. Have a nice day. Ryu smiles pleasingly before leaving three of us alone in the kitchen. I decided to use Ryu's departure as a seg into more, seg, seg into more questions. Do you beat each other up like this often? Is that what it looked like? Actually, it looked like you were intent on killing each other. Vincent, likely sensing the opportunity to make another sexist joke, snaps away. What did you expect to see when you asked us to show you our ability? I, oh, I asked to see their abilities? I thought I was pointing to combat train, you know? A tickle fight? <laughs> this woman. Ugh, he's so obnoxious. No, take the high ground. Take the high ground. I feel like Vincent is close to Castle. We don't want to hurt, uh, hurt him. Take the high ground. But as much as I want to let Vincent know exactly what I think of him, something tells me that no amount of complaining will get him to change his ways. So I remain silent. Anyway, get used to the sight of blood and violence. From now on, you'll be seeing a lot of it. And empty that head of yours of any charitable and virtuous ideas. Huh! So you're still intent on making my decisions for me. Vincent shrugs his shoulders exaggeratedly, and his mocking has me convinced I didn't get the last word in. As if we were running late, Cass hurries us out of the kitchen, and into the party room where I ask, Don't you need to rest? Don't you want to feed the cat? Yes, I'd love to visit Leaf. So you've given that minky hunk of fur a name already. How does he know about Leaf? Has he been watching us, or maybe Cass told him? But the simple fact that he has verbally disparaged that wonderful orange cat angers me even more. Vincent is absolutely vile. I'm going to tell him exactly what I think of him. But before Vincent can follow us out into the hallway, Cass slams a door in his face, thus ending the argument. He then noticeably grimaces as he is ashamed of his partner's behavior. Then just the two of us head to his apartment. Rubbing his forehead and apparently still annoyed with Vincent, he asks me to wait while he changes. A minute later, we're out on the street. It feels like my life has been nothing but running back and forth between these doors lately. Sorry. Hmm? Oh, are you in another- Is that another shirt that we don't know? I'm so preoccupied with my door dilemma that Cass's apology has thrown me off, completely off. I didn't mean to frighten, you, frighten or offend you. His voice is so sincere, so, so sincere that I instantly relaxed a little. Your wounds haven't healed yet. Honestly, you should probably get some rest instead of coming out with me. I'm fine. Girl, you can't even go out if you wanted to without him. So, like, you want to be able to feed the cat if he isn't here with you. Are you sure? It sounds like you're saying that so I don't- I won't worry. That gash in your stomach seemed pretty deep. Well, bro. <laughs> it's gone! But- Wait, have we seen the shirt before, though? You're endangered? Castle suddenly lifts up his t-shirt. See, I'm alright. That wasn't even a serious training session. Just a warm-up. That's a warm-up?! The image of Cass's gorgeous naked stomach lingers in my mind even though he has long since lowered his t-shirt and moved the conversation onto something else. Damn it! Why the hell can't I get a picture out of- uh, can't get that picture out of my head? Oh, Caven Dish, give me the strength! When did I become so obsessed with the male body? <laughs> this is extremely distracting. With my head in the closet, I unwittingly follow behind Cass while periodically tripping over myself. After almost crashing into a light pole, he steps in front of me. What's wrong? You've been out of it for the last five minutes. Heck, what do I tell him? Use a math riddle for an excuse. Ask him to never do that again. That was the first time I ever see saw a man's boy like that. Tell Castle that he's very attractive. Oh, can we tell him he's attractive? Bad ending right away. I'm kidding. 
kidding about the bad ending. I'm still choosing it. <laughs> I'm so confused that I inadvertently blurred out the first thing that comes to mind. I mean, he's been so honest with us. We should be honest too, right? Very attractive. You came to that conclusion just from seeing my stomach. No. Well, yes. Girl, no! You've been you you've been thinking he's attractive this whole time. When you're fucking liar. Okay. Yeah. This is extremely awkward. We continue on in silence. When we finally reach the empty lot, I snap out of it and mumble guiltily. I forgot to bring food. It's completely slipped my mind. I my packet from his backpack, he hands it to me. Confused, I take it and realize it's the same brand I had brought before. C oh, Cass, how do I understand you? Do you really care or are you just desperate to take advantage of me? I crouch down and pour the food into the bowl, which had been carefully licked clean. Now when I put Cass out again, I decide to leave before Leaf comes around. But as soon as I turn my back, it occurs to me how awkward it would be to spend the night at his place after having seen his bare skin earlier. Without any regard for my principled feelings, he leads me straight to his door. Maybe he's right, and a sleepover is only vulgar if you want it to be vulgar. Hell, why am I putting thoughts into Cass's head and agreeing with them? Is this the first sign of schizophrenia? Well, since I've already agreed to this, it's too late to back out now. And now here I am in Cass's apartment. I completely forgot that he and I are staying in his apartment after I admitted the truth. <laughs> the room is quite cozy. There's an air for bookcases and dumbbells. But the fact that Vincent is here is both my salvation and punishment. He's reading a book on the top bunk and immediately greets me with his trademark courtesy. I'm not sharing my bed with anyone. I order you a sofa, but it won't be here until tomorrow. I could always take the bottom bunk, but maybe the guest room wouldn't be so bad. Thankfully, Cass has already pulled a mattress out from somewhere, which causes Vincent to cry out with indignation. Both relieved and upset, I exhale a long sigh. So wait a minute. Why am I upset? Was there a second thought, a second there that I actually thought I was going to fall asleep in Cass's arms? I mean, yeah, it's good that Cass doesn't live alone, but Vincent is a master at derailing romantic moments. Cass hands me a pile of things. If you don't want Vincent to grumble at you, take a shower in the morning, at night, and whenever you're sweating. Um, those are some pretty strict requirements. Sign Cass glances sideways at, uh, sideways at Vincent. Is this a stinking rebellion? Thank you, Vincent, for helping me deal with my feelings for Cass by overshadowing them with a desire to strangle you. I obediently stomp into the bathroom where I am, where I, as if punishing myself, for with my thoughts, begin running a cold bath. Wow, look at the little ducky! And is that a cuckoo of some sort or something? I don't know. Aww, they have matching toothbrushes, right? Or is that water floss pick thing? No idea. But this is my first time visiting a man's place, and an incredibly attractive one at that. Damn it. Chico, why are you acting like a stupidly naive girl? What if he's trying to seduce you? I do not see that at all. This whole time, homeboy has been keeping to himself. He hasn't thrown himself onto us like the others. I don't know. I think she's just getting too paranoid at this point. Then he's almost at the finish line. Damn, damn, damn. What do you... Girl? Calm down. It's okay if you fall in love. But I plan to continue communicating with Cass. I need to set out some explicit rules. Rule number one, do not look in his general direction for more than five seconds. This has to be hormones. I mean, I'm a mature woman. And there's a hot guy around. Speaking of hot guys, I should add another rule to my interaction with Cass. No admitting that he's hot. Ever. But it isn't long before I'm chastising myself for something else. I had forgotten my backpack in my room. Well done, Michiko. This is a great start. Fortunately, Cass not only gave me a towel, but some clothes as well. A huge t-shirt and shorts. Their sizes make it abundantly clear who they belong to. According to my very limited knowledge of relationships, the fact that I'll be dressed in a men's clothing means I'm about to be pr proposition. What? Knowing it's too late to back down now, I sign changing to Cass's clothes before leaving the bathroom and find myself face to face with Vincent, who is laughing hysterically. You look like a first grader in her dad's clothes. Kick Vincent's bunk. Roll your eyes and ignore him. Snap back. Can I kick his bunk? Compared to Vincent's previous remarks, the, this the, I hate the sound that it gave me for the choices. It sounds like I picked a bad choice. This latest quip doesn't hit nearly as hard, but that doesn't mean I'll allow him to mock me with impunity. I quietly down at the bottom bunk, give the wooden frame above me a solid kick. Hopefully, Vincent found the thump a tad uncomfortable. Oh, how incredibly smart! Kick harder next time and your leg will break. Vincent leans over the edge and glares down at me with caustic eyes. I can kick your face, will that work for you? Oh, You look cute. He's so cute. What the, what the fuck? What the fuck? He sticks out his tongue. Yeah, okay, let's try it. However, Cass ends the argument. Enough. Now, good night. Hmm, this mirror did Cass sound irritated. 
Kes turns off the light and I close my eyes, but I can tell from some, from the sounds he's making that he the sounds that he's making that he's lying on his mattress somewhere nearby. Hoping to not be noticed, I open my eyes again and look at him. He's lying with his back to me. Yeah, I can't help but notice how broad his shoulders are. I wonder how he felt when he saw me wearing his clothes. Just the thought of it is <laughs> making me feel hot and I toss off my blanket. It seems it's the only way to cope is to remain cool on the outside, no matter what I feel on the inside. Maybe I should start working on some self-discipline. All I need to do is control myself. That shouldn't be too difficult, right? You can't stop your heart from falling in love with someone when you've fallen already. Alright? The only reaction to your heart now is to be accepted and happy or rejected and broken, you know? Once you fall in love with somebody. I got barely any sleep last night, all due to a very restless Vincent. He kept tossing and turning all night long and wasn't exactly quiet about it. All I wanted was to smother his face with a pillow until he settled down. Of course, the moment I finally managed to fall asleep, I'm immediately woken again. Go for a run. Turkish brothel. What the fuck? This is the most wildest shirt you've had. <laughs> I'm roused so abruptly that it takes me a couple seconds to figure out what's going on. Blinking, I see Cass standing before me. When I open my mouth to answer, he hurriedly whispers, Shh, are you awake, Vincent? I'm attached to this man. If I get a bad ending, because I'm attached to him, I'm all for it. Go to the castle. Mm, okay, just give me five minutes to wake up. I perk up on the street. I was wearing my tracksuit when I left my mom's house, so I guess I have no excuse. Once dressed, I head outside with Cass. Oh, and how the fresh air clears my foggy brain. When I reach the training area, Cass walks comfortably towards the horizontal bars. Oh my god, you're so handsome for what? Look how charming he is. And I can't help but stare as he begins to work out on them without a hint of hesitation. Can you do techniques on those things? Without answering, Cass flies into a series of acrobatics that would perfectly that would fit perfectly in an Olympic routine. All while standing here frozen with admiration. The man isn't just athletic and muscular, he's inhumanely in, inhumanely graceful as well. Every single one of his movements is smooth and measured. But I sometimes feel something predatory and dangerous emanating from him. What? <laughs> when am I supposed to be afraid of him? When? <laughs> I try to push the thought away as I continue watching the man when he neatly lands at the end of his performance I break into applause. That was fantastic. It was anything ordinary people can't do. What the fuck you mean? I can't even do those bars there. The chin ups and shit, I could not do it. I remember in school, uh, I actually couldn't even reach them because I was fucking short. So they had to give me a chair and then I felt so embarrassed doing it in front of everyone. I fucking walked right into the beam and you could hear it. That was so fucking embarrassing. Never, I can never live that down. That's the same thing like the soccer ball. We had to play soccer inside the gymnasium, and the soccer ball flew directly into my face. And I had glasses at the time, and it just flew off, and I couldn't see anything. And all I could think about was, oh my god, my crush just saw a soccer ball hit me straight in the face, and now I can't see. But then that's when I met my best friend, because she picked up the glasses for me. <laughs> Former best friend, we lost connection because you know adulthood sucks. But anyway, done rambling. We're here with Castle. Not only does Castle not look tired, but his breathing is still steady and calm. Clearly, that routine was a piece of cake for him. I'd have said he was just showing off, but as I gazed into his absolutely, absolutely emotionless face, I realized there wasn't a hint of superiority, superiority in his words. He was merely stating a fact. It seems that everything is simple from his point of view. I asked for a show, and he gave me one. I want to get stronger. What type of workout should I do? I'm not sure. What about yourself? I don't exercise for strength. Quantities don't really need it. Uh, need to. Our bodies naturally adapt to pressure more quickly. This is especially noticeable in combat. Combat quantities. We get all of our training in quantity fields. Bodybuilding is for ordinary people. Oh uh, yeah, I remember how, despite his own fragility, Vincent swung the cast sword around effortlessly, even though it weighed twice as much as him. I have no doubt that what Cass is telling me right now is true. Then why do you go for runs and go to the beach? I love moving. Surprise, I stare blankly at him. To think there's someone in this world who enjoys moving. Most people would rather eat and take a nap. Noticing my perplexity, Castle tries to explain. When your body works properly, it's easy to enjoy movement. Huh, like driving an old rundown jalopy or a busted up minibus compared to a sleek new sports car? Besides to experiment a little, I start moving my arms and legs around. But even though I've attended many a uh, dance class and I exercise quite often, the effort doesn't bring me any pleasure or joy. Heck, I guess I'm a real wreck. It's not that you're out of shape, you just don't feel your body. First, stop constantly abusing yourself. What? You're always beating yourself up, questioning and doubting. 
Oh yeah, I'm good at that. <laughs> Cats hit the nail so precisely on the head that I immediately flush with embarrassment, but try to hide it with a bit of bravado. I shouldn't have said that. Now you're worried about that too. Cass suddenly reaches out and presses the tip of my nose. Wish you home. Can you stop? He's reminding me so much of like Itachi when, when he like like pokes uh, Sasuke's forehead or whatever. Like he, he's having a hard time ex like expressing his true emotions and stuff. Bro, I'm about to fall for this man. I'm gonna cry any second now when he's dying on me. But anyway, thank you guys for watching today's episode. Stay beautiful and I'll see you guys in the next one.